Happy almost Valentine's Day, Amanda. I mean, for a single lady, it's just Tuesday. Well, Galentine's Day. Yes, that one I can celebrate. Cool. Awesome. Happy Galentine's Day. My favorite, my second favorite holiday invented by a TV show. What's your first? Festivus. I almost said Candle Nights. <laughs> That's not a TV not a show. Thing. Not yet, at least. Not oh, yet. Ooh. McElroy Brothers. Nice. Coming home. Did you watch that, uh... Trailer, by the way? Yeah, yeah, it's dope. So, Valentine's Day. I know as a single lady yourself, you're not going to be going out on a date for Valentine's Day. Wait, rub it in, Julia. Listen, God. listen. I, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. This is a setup, okay? <laughs> no, okay, okay. I would normally not point out your singleness. No, but... I, I know I'm not touchy about it. Anyway, all right, all right, cool. Right, cool. So, as a single lady, you're probably not going to be going out on a date for uh, Valentine's Day, correct? That's correct. Um, but I'll be marathoning Supergirl and eating vegan Ben and Jerry's. Solid choice. Yes. But for women who may be going out for Valentine's Day, or for men who may be going out for Valentine's Day, those are kind of treacherous waters to go through. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Unless you're, like, super established in your relationship. Mm-hmm. I imagine being in a, like, semi-ambiguous dating situation, uh, that would be a, a tricky a tricky sitch. For sure. So I kind of wanted to create an episode warning our listeners about certain people during Valentine's Day. Or should I say <gasps> certain spirits during Valentine's Day? Oh, man. Yeah. Are these, like... like like spirits that prey on the lovely and lonely and love seeking. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes, you're gonna love, love it. it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Oh my god, I'm so ready. So because we know Japan is super creepy, I most was of just the time, gonna say we we're gonna start with one. Japan. Great. The first one we're gonna start with is the Hona Ona. This is a woman who was first described in a story called the Botan Doro, which translates to the peony lantern. Okay, peony, like the lovely flower. Yes, uh, she's described as very beautiful, but also extremely skinny. Uh, she travels from town to town carrying a red lantern. Okay. Peony lantern. When she arrives in a town, she attempts to visit with men and sleep with them. Oh, okay, fine. So in Natural. this story, uh, a man named Shinojo instantly falls in love with her the moment he sees her. Like, she's beautiful. I yep. get it. She's a mysterious woman walking into your life. like Warmly lit in, like, a warm tone of light. Super By cute. a lantern. I'm into that. Very flattering. So every night she sneaks into his home. They bone. They sleep together. Um, I know what bone means. Well, no, no, no. I mean, like, oh, they like bone in bed and overnight. in bed overnight they oh, sleep okay. together. Okay, that's a step. Great. Um, so... One night, a super curious, kind of creepy neighbor uh, spots the woman sneaking into his house and, like, goes to check it out. Ooh. Because he's secretly a voyeur or something. Or, like, it's a village and wants to gossip. All yeah, right. whatever. Fair um, so when the light of the moon falls over the couple, the neighbor notices that Shinojo is sleeping with a skeleton. <gasps> Because it turns out Hono Ono literally translates to bone lady. And and she's just like, she survives and gets sustenance from like that, that good, good, that that good, good I sex. Wanna, I don't want to finish that. No, I was going to go for a way more graphic thing there. Awesome. That I couldn't even, I'm blushing just thinking about what I thought about. <laughs> Never mind. Oh God. Okay. Anyway. So in these Japanese stories, the Hono Ono is a, has vampiric powers Um, Where she can kill men by extracting their life force or by grabbing their hands until they turn into skeletons just like her. Where in life force equals... uh, uh, Semen. I was trying to think of a better... I was trying to think of a better... A better metaphor or or euphemism. Uh, His seed. Oh, God, no, I hate that word so much. (laughs) Well, you have to bleep that out. It was so (laughs) cringeworthy. Not that it isn't necessarily destructive. Like, she just, you know, like, sweeps into town. They have, like, a torrid love affair. And, like, does she leave them and they're okay sometimes? Or does it always just end? Never okay. End in, like, that, that embrace of death. Don't sleep with a living skeleton and you won't die. That's so weird that, 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 like, her being skinny is, like, a warning sign or something. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, unusual, but good. I, I suppose, just just ethereally, skeletally, skeletal. Yeah, makes sense, right? Uh, all right, well, I'm I'm duly warned if I see a woman walking um, into my town with a red lantern mm-hmm. late at night uh, and wants to just inexplicably bone, I'll be like, Don't do it. you could be a vampiric spirit, and I'm not going to do this. That's what Tinder is for. That's what Tinder is God, for. God, imagine, like, all these spirits, but on Tinder. Sounds like we have a, a radio drama to, to write. <laughs> I would totally write that <laughs> shit. Okay, so we're going to stick with Japan for the next one. The next one Why is... Why go anywhere else? The Jorogumo. There's a story from Japan that tells the tale of another beautiful woman who would entice men into her home. Uh, she would then play the biwa, which is a kind of Japanese lute. And then the men who heard it would become mesmerized. Great. While they're like chilling out in a trance, listening to this 
bomb ass music. Nothing is wrong uh, so far. The woman binds them in spider silk threads. Ooh. When he wakes up, which she just has like lying around, or they like come out of her arm. Well, or something? listen. Okay. When he wakes up, he wakes up just in time to realize that he's getting devoured by a giant spider, and the woman's nowhere to be seen. I love that. I love that. It's like the way more badass, uh, like Hansel and Gretel, Grandma Wolf situation. It is way way cooler. So interestingly, the name uh, Jorogumo, Hansel and Gretel, Little Red Riding Hood. Got that wrong. Yes. Okay. Yes, you're correct. Yep. I just passed it off. I was like, yep, that's probably a thing. <laughs> so Jorogumo is written two different ways because kanji do you know anything about like japanese spelling with kanji and stuff yeah like the that? the like characters right things. so the characters uh they can spell things different ways and it still means the same thing mm-hmm. so in this case uh it's made up of the characters uh which mean the binding bride or the whore spider Ooh. One of these things is better than the other. <laughs> um, so stories say that she also used to seduce samurai, asking them to marry her before devouring them on their wedding night. Dang. Or she would appear as a beautiful woman who was carrying a baby, which when people got closer, it was revealed to be like an egg, like a spider egg sack. <gasps> and then all the baby spiders hatch out and then devour a person. <gasps> Okay, that's that's straight up horrifying. Yes. Uh, just just any idea of like an, an egg sack bursting into tiny baby spiders mm-hmm. ever since, remember in our elementary school library, there was this like book, like horror book, yes. one of which was like the yes, cover with yes, like baby yes. spiders. No. Which they were like, oh, this is a children's horror book. Why which is makes that no okay sense. for fourth graders? I don't know. There were lots of editions of those books. I think it was a yes, scary story series. It was. But one of them had baby spiders on the cover. And I like think it was coming like out of a person's face. Yeah. Or in, in her mm-hmm. face or something. Yeah. Nope. Never been the same. Nope. Nope. Just super not good. Nope. 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 I love though that she's just like how how should I effectively catch my prey? Forget spinning a web. The the, the web is my allure, and just like just stands outside like with her hand on her hip on her stoop waiting. Yep. And men are like this this seems normal. I'm into it. I'm just super into that aesthetic. <laughs> and also I'm into the whole idea of like this mama spider feeding her babies with wary travelers who she the, comes across the bodies on the road. of like loose men. Yeah. Yeah. I'm into it. I mean you know that I'm always up for like a reversal of the traditional you know like slut shaming or like being punished for having sex myth. Hint, there's a lot of that coming up. Yeah, you're so good to me, Jules. I know, I know I am. Uh, So we're going to go to Greece because I love Greece. We we know this. So Lamia. Lamia was the queen of Libya once, and she was renowned for her beauty. Cool. Of course, usually. She was also the mistress of Zeus, which you never fucking do. Don't do that. Never fall in love with a stranger, as Marcus Mumford said on that great record. But also, never... Never, never give it up for Zeus. Don't, just don't fucking do it. Because of course, Hera finds out, kills all of Lamia's children. Hera is not known for her forgiveness forgiveness or subtlety. Yes, no, she's just like, well, fuck you. All your children are dead. So it depends on the story, but in some stories, the loss of her children is what turns her into a horrible demon that devours the children of others out of jealousy. In other stories, it's just Hera kind of rubbing salt into the wound, like... BT dubs, now you're a demon and you want to eat other people's babies. Sorry, this is how you sustain yourself. Yeah. Um, so it's not until later European traditions that Lamia ends up turning into the Lamai, which are a group of seductresses and enchantresses mm. who would then make men fall in love with them, then devour them once they were married and once the marriage was consummated. Great. So they they just stick around for the for the goods and then out of there. This was also like such a thing in Europe that um, an archbishop from the ninth century listed in a list of reasons that divorce would be allowed the Lamai as a danger that threatened marriages by seducing husbands. Wow. Yeah. So like the husband's like, oops, sorry. Oops, I did have sex with that, but she was Somehow an enchantress. I escaped. Seductress. I escaped. Don't worry about it. You're welcome. I'm back. <laughs> God. Men are the worst sometimes. <sighs> um, especially medieval century men. Fuck them. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I guess our the records that that remain are the ones of like extreme cases and yeah. with people who are like lovely, you know, husbands and fathers and brothers and don't make anyone mad. That's true. Don't survive. But yeah. why don't we tell stories about that? That's boring. Yeah, we wouldn't. We wouldn't. So we're gonna head a little bit north to your homeland, Amanda. Air Ireland. Yes. Woo. Um. So we are gonna talk about the Lanan. Seeb, probably is how you pronounce it. Yes, that Lenan sounds right. She is a beautiful fairy woman who interacts with humans only to find herself a human lover. 
Lovers. <laughs> I love that. I mean, of course. She's Why just, else? She's just scraping the barrel here. She's got to descend down and she's got she's to talk to them real quick. So lovers of this woman live highly inspired lives because usually they're poets or whatever, but their lives are also very brief. Uh, okay. Because the fairies act as muses for these men in exchange for their love and affection, but their relationship leads to madness and immature death. Oh, shit. Yeah. I love this, though, because it, there is, like, such tradition, whether you're talking about, like, Byron, Keats. Keats died early or Byron died early? Byron, Shelley? I think, died early. Yeah. Shelley's husband also died early. Mary Shelley's husband. Yes. But when she's a great story Shelley? because yes. she had him... Cremated? Cremated. Why did I not remember that word? I don't, I don't know why you holding your hands <laughs> as if you were holding a football made me think of cremated. <laughs> but I guess I just... It's it's roughly football shaped with the urn. Right. Um, <laughs> so she had him cremated. And when he died, his heart for some reason... or. Not when he died, but when he was cremated, his heart got calcified and turned into this, like, creepy calcified <gasps> lump. And Mary Shelley just kept it. Because she was macabre and badass. I know. She was the best. Anyway. Sorry. Whichever one of them died early. But there is such a tradition, obviously, of, like, the tortured young artist who mm-hmm. dies early and, and either is, like, is consumptive or, like, you know, ends their own life or struggles with madness or depression. Like, whatever it is. This is such an interesting, like, explanation and reckoning with that kind of stereotype. The sort of, like you know, portrait of the artist as a young man or stars of young birth, their kind of tradition. So your boy Yates actually did a whole little thing about her, and I'm going to quote it. Yes. Um, so the Lanan Sheeb, or fairy mistress, seeks the love of mortals. If they refuse, she must be their slave. If they consent, they are hers and can only escape by finding another to take their place. The fairy lives on their life and they waste away. Death is no escape from her. She is the Gaelic muse, for she gives inspiration to those she persecutes. The Gaelic poets die young, for she is restless, and will not let them remain long on earth. This malignant phantom. Wow, Uh, that's a much better explanation than, like, malnutrition and mental illness. (laughs) Yep, sounds about right. I'll take it. So we're going to move on, because we want to keep this episode kind of short. Yeah, Um, bonus episode should theoretically be short, but we, listen, oh, mid mid roll plug. Listen, guys, if you want us to bring you episodes weekly, we like want this. to do that, too. We want to do that, too. So you can support us on Patreon. Or if you can't support us on Patreon, or if you do already, because you're great, please go to spiritspodcast.com slash survey. And you can take a five-minute survey, help us out, help us find sponsors, help us sustain the show, help us bring us to you weekly. That would be great. That would be great. Okay. But we're going to Venezuela first. Oh, good. Yes. So I'm going to start with just the story of it. And then we can dive into the different variations and stuff. So there's this girl named Melissa. And she uh, is... It's not a Venezuelan name. <laughs> I, know, I don't know why. It's just like <laughs> fucking Melissa. Um, <laughs> she is the most beautiful girl in this village. A uh, small town village in Venezuela. I just want to hear stories sometime about like the, the medium girl. Like like the solid five. No, she's got to be the prettiest. Like the, the, the tippity top of the bell curve. Listen, the prettiest girl becomes the weird demon. Okay. Middle girls don't... Get no, it. no shade to the prettiest girl. Oh, I'm, no. I'm just saying, like, it would be really interesting if, like, it's the the middlest girl. Yeah, I mean, I see where you mean. Okay, Melissa, small town, beautiful girl, married to a husband. They have a baby son together. Uh, the husband's very good to her. One day she's wow, plot twist. I know, it's shocking, <laughs> right? One day she's bathing naked in the river, like you do, right? When a fellow villager, uh, a man sees her and he just like straight up follows her and washes her bathe and does it for about a month or so Uh, and she doesn't notice creepy one day she finally does notice and she tells him to go away she's super mad leave her alone uh instead the dude just straight face lies to her and says i've come to warn you your husband is having an affair with your mother no the worst kind of affair the girl fucking furious like throws on some clothes runs to her house Goes to her house, opens the door. Her husband is sleeping there with her baby. Okay. She is still in a fucking blind rage, though, because she took this weird, creepy dude's yeah. word to heart. Yeah. So what she does is she lights the house on fire with both of them in it. No. Um, as the villagers hear the screams coming from the husband and the baby, they all go running. Meanwhile, our girl goes to her mother's house and finds her mother on the patio. She takes a machete. What did I just say? <laughs> uh, machete, <laughs> as Griffin would say. Machete. <laughs> or like that one dude who's named Machete in all of the uh, movies he's in. The Machete movies? No, whatever. It doesn't matter. Nope, didn't like So 
girl takes the machete, swipes it at her mom, <gasps> slices her mom's stomach open. Swiper, no swiping in that way. <laughs> so she attacks her, she hits her in the stomach. The mom starts bleeding out, but as she's bleeding out, she puts a curse on her daughter. One last curse. Saying that from then on... Sit back, on, have a drink with me. One last curse. <laughs> Saying from then on, she would have to avenge all women by killing their unfaithful husbands. Why did, why was that what came to the mom's mind? Or did Melissa inexplicably <laughs> name Melissa? <laughs> it has to be wrong. But did, did she just like, like discuss the infidelity as she was killing the mom? Did it actually she happen? And that's why? Her. But like, why, why? That's such a weird curse if that actually didn't yeah, happen. it is. So that's just one version of the story. Okay. Though. There are other versions of the story. Basically, that's her origin story. Right. She was then on uh, called La Sayona, uh, which La Sayona, uh, it either refers to the cloth that the ghost wears, which is kind of similar to a white dress that mm-hmm. was a medieval garment known as Sayona. It also refers to the French term Sayon, which means executioner. Nice. Which I like. So here's another story. Another story features La Sayona in the jungles of Venezuela, where men are traveling away from home. Mm-hmm. Uh, to their fellow travelers, they may mention that maybe they want to be with another woman besides the one that they left at home. What else do you talk about on an all-dude trek through the jungle? Later that night, a beautiful woman will approach them and tries to lure them away from their fellow travelers. Nice. If they follow La Sayona, she reveals animal features and then attacks and either mangles or devours the man, leaving behind some remains so his fellow travelers will find them. Nice. Would you rather be mangled or devoured? Probably devoured, honestly. If she kills me first and then devours me, I have no problem with that. Avi. Yeah. There's another version, though, where she doesn't transform, but she simply lets the men have sex with her, then tears off parts of their body and devours them. Hint, it's the penis. Ouch. Yeah, so that serves as punishment for being unfaithful. Interesting. I mean, it is a bit of a, like, like entrapment. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're kind of like... Yeah, but, like, if you're gonna be unfaithful, like, fuck you, dude, I guess. I guess. If they, um, haven't, if they haven't negotiated it and set clear terms and, like, have a communication schedule, yes. yes. Um, other stories, based off of that last one, say that she gives men diseases to make their genitals swell with blisters and boils. I mean, has probably roots in reality. Which effectively tells the wives that the men have been unfaithful with right. La Sayona, which yes. is really cool. Um, so this character is really similar uh, and usually is associated with the story of La Llorona. Yep. So we'll probably talk about her a little bit more in the future. We probably will. We yeah. probably will. So these are the kind of people that you need to avoid when you're planning your Valentine's Day thing. Absolutely. So takeaways. If it seems super simple, probably beware. Mm-hmm. The Red Lantern is a giveaway. Mm-hmm. A mysterious bundle that may or may not be a baby or a sack of eggs. Just avoid. Also, don't let people play instruments for you on a first date. Yeah. Nope. Never good. Yeah. Always going to put you under a spell. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you end up in a fairy bower, just don't drink or eat. That's yep. just a good rule for a rule of thumb. If you haven't negotiated it with your partner, don't be unfaithful. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much it. I think that's a solid game plan. I will keep these lessons in mind while I am marathoning Supergirl, drinking red wine, and eating vegan Ben and Jerry's on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Thank you for listening, listeners and spiriters. Stay creepy. Stay cool. Spirits was created by Julia Shafini and me, Amanda McLaughlin. It's edited by Eric Schneider with music by Kevin McLeod and visual design by Allison Wakeman. Subscribe to Spirits on your preferred podcast app to make sure you never miss an episode. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr at Spirits Podcast. On our Patreon page, patreon.com slash spirits podcast, you can sign up for exclusive content like behind the scenes photos, audio extras, director's commentary, blooper reels, and beautiful recipe cards with custom drink and snack pairings. If you like the show, please share with your friends and leave us a review on iTunes. It really does help. Thank you so much for listening. Till next time.